I remember uh, Real Avery, shot the Real Avery, uh, was a was a rookie, and uh, we was beating the, we beating the brakes off. Uh, I, I forget who he was with. I want to say the Grizzlies when they was in Vancouver, but I went to Will Avery. Said, uh, "Hey, listen, you got a guard. Uh, we got guard, my man. You know, he's he's serious. He can put some points up." Will was like, "No, nah, it's, it's, it's garbage time. We, you know, what I'm saying? I was like, no, young fella. This is what I'm telling you. <laughs> he got there, waved me off. Fuck out of here. Boom. He get in here, man, dude. You're like, man, not calling dude, but my move got like 25 in like a six minute." Like a six minute work, like came in and got some work off, but. Okay, Black Pack crew, welcome back, man. We got a film coming out tomorrow from uh, my mood, Abdul Raouf. Hope I'm saying his name right. Y'all probably know him as Chris Jackson. This guy had Tourette syndrome, came from below poverty, humble beginnings, took a stance with millions. They wiped out his career. If you never heard of him, I'm gonna show you some highlights. So I showed you some in the front, I'm gonna show you some in the back. Uh, like he gave Michael Jordan a, a, a point duel. Him and Michael Jordan went at 71 points back to back. He's not these fake Steph Currys, these fake LeBrons. He's not these old fake uh, people that, that go along, get along. This man took a stance. It cost him millions. It wiped out his career. Everybody know him. Uh, one of my good friends met him. Uh, you know, he, he's going around speaking. But this film comes out uh, this weekend on Showtime. And it's a, it's a, it's a nice film, but Everybody who knows about him, man, if you can't watch the film, this man took a stance. Like I said, man, they was coming at him. He was just peaceful what he did. Think about it. This guy had a disease, Tourette syndrome, and was still able to put up major points. Man, you can't get people to do nothing now, like I said. But watch. Watch some of these highlights. Watch some of these clips. I got where he came from. I want you to see this, uh, his, his humble beginning. This poor beyond poor. That we grew up in, we had to grow up real fast. My mother having to work and raise three children and in that environment where you have drugs, you have prostitution, you right up next street and she's gone and we're there basically to ourselves. That was real hard. Okay, now this is the house this guy lived in. Now you can see that right there. Now I want to go to his, he, I'm talking about the Tourette syndrome. And how it just, it was, oh, watch this. Looking in front of a mirror. And I was fixing my hair or something. And I was moving. And I was popping my neck. Pow! I mean, I was really popping my neck. And I was making sounds. And I was doing it like, popping it like this way. Real hard. Pow! And I was moving my hips and jerking my body. And I'm looking at myself. I'm like, why can't I stop? I kept looking at myself. Same crossover move, same fake, same quick jump shot. I'm, I haven't changed a thing, and the same thing is working. Son always in control, you know what I'm saying? My decision to go pro was primarily because I was concerned about my family. I remember going home on one trip. I looked into the refrigerator and I didn't see hardly anything. I went into the bathroom and I was washing my hands and I put my forearms on the sink and it fell to the floor. The sink? I, yeah, and I came out and I remember saying, the hell with this. And my mama was in. Like I say, you know, poverty beyond poverty, poor beyond poor. But l l let's get into some of this, uh, these clips that I want to show you on him taking the stands before Steph Curry, all these people, you know, just voting with one party because it's the go along, get along. This is a man that say, hey, let me do my own thing. But let's watch and let's see and please enjoy. It, something's wrong. Yeah. It, it isn't, something's not, to me, something's not right when I was at LSU, but I remember receiving the autobiography of Malcolm X. That's the first book I really enjoyed. It's not the first book I completed. The Quran was, was the first one I, man, I, I enjoyed this book. It touched me. When he, when he got to the point to where when he went to Hodge, he met all different cultures, drank from the same cup, and how he realized that what he was being taught wasn't correct. 
I said, this is what I'm looking for. This is it. When I was on the pilgrimage, I had close contact with Muslims whose skin would in America be classified as white and with Muslims who were themselves would be classified as white in America. But these particular Muslims didn't call themselves white. They looked upon themselves as human beings, as part of the human family. And the major thing that touched me about Malcolm's autobiography was that he transcended his environment, never truly being educated and then educating himself in prison. That, that fascinated me more than anything. When I was in Denver, I was in contact with this priest and his protege, and we would talk from time to time, and the word Islam came up. He said, if, if I was interested, I'd go to the masjid on Evans Street. Went there, and we were nervous, because I didn't know anything about Muslims. You know. uh -huh. This mock mood thing has really touched off some nerves. One of the greatest players in the history was cheated out of his career. Hold on, stop. Go back before that, because this is important. Uh -huh. it's good. I never saw somebody shoot like that. Who was this dude torching the Lakers? He was Steph Curry before Steph Curry. Quickness and the creative flair he had. He wasn't good, he was great. It looked like I was watching a guy play basketball. To watch him have Tourette syndrome and still destroy the best players in the league. I could have nine shots in a row. If there's one glitch in the move, I have to start over. Mama, that man. Oh, yeah. I couldn't embrace success. This is too good to be true. Things like this don't happen to people like me. I don't think anybody could have foreseen what was about to happen. I was having issues with my faith. I embraced Islam, and life changed. I noticed that Bakhmut was not standing for the national anthem. He believes the flag symbolizes oppression. Am I saying that everything in America is bad? No. But wherever the bad is, as a Muslim, we don't stand for it. That's when a lot of people turned on him. Mahmoud never said, I'm going to burn the house down. But the Klan burned his house down. I thought I was going to die every day. We should have covered him. We should have had his back. But we didn't. His willingness to take a stand in an era where very few pro athletes did this. You should be celebrated for that. He just simply froze Brian Hogan, and Hogan's a good defensive guard. But well, you can't just have one guy play him. The foul line back to Anthony inside the big Larry Johnson. Directly in the lane like that, usually it's going to be a goaltending call. Jackson, three. I tell you, I look at his eyes, and I think he really feels.